Does Ed Sheeran sound down to earth? Can we hear that he's authentic just by how he writes the melody? Are there techniques you can use to sound more genuine and more honest? I think yes, and you're about to find out why. First of all, thank you for voting Ed Sheeran for this video. If you have suggestions for which artist to do next, leave a comment below. That said, let's jump right into it. The first thing that strikes me as interesting about Sheeran's melody writing style is his influences from rap music. A lot of his melodies are very rhythmical and groovy, which is rare in folk music. Most singer-songwriters prefer a legato feel. Sheeran also pronounces his words like a rapper, with very clear enunciation, unlike most folk artists who swallow their consonants. Don't you know that Sheeran's contrast of fast-paced melodies against a single guitar is one of the things that make him such an engaging writer. On top of that, it fits his personality. Young, fresh, energetic. This is what folk sounds like if you draw from Fetty Wap instead of Bob Dylan. Now when we're talking about techniques, I want you to realize that most of the techniques artists are using are not intentional. Like, when you're selecting a shower curtain, you're probably not thinking too much about your choice, but you will probably end up buying something that reflects your personality in some way. So, for example, you'd probably not buy an old-fashioned brown curtain with cats on it. If you're male, you'd probably not buy a pink curtain, and if you're an adult, you'd probably stay away from the SpongeBob SquarePants one. Of course, we're talking averages here, same as when we talk about artists' favorite intervals. Most artists have probably used every interval at some point or another, but the ones they use most often tell us something about them, about the way they think, feel, and most importantly, write. In this video, I want to talk about something that is often looked down upon by artists, marketing. And I am aware that talking about this subject in an Ed Sheeran video feels a little bizarre. I mean, didn't Ed get famous because of his authentic charm? Before you blow the comment section to bits, I do believe that Ed Sheeran is a really nice lad that you could actually have a beer with and have a good time. Maybe I'm naive, but I don't think that part is made up, just like I don't think Pink or The Weeknd are faking their attitude. The best artists capitalize on certain traits like their voice or writing style that make them instantly recognizable. In music, you call this your style. In marketing, you call it an image. So for example, what do you see in your mind when you think of Ed Sheeran as private life? I see him in a pub. Or do you see Rihanna? At the beach? How about Pink? I see her trashing a hotel room. Miley Cyrus? Naked, on a wrecking ball, of course. Wiz Khalifa? Smoking a joint, playing FIFA. Do these images resonate with you? Do they make sense to you? That is because these artists have a clear image that they put forward through their musical choices, dress code, stage show, music videos, how they talk in interviews, and how they interact with their fans. So let's look at the three artists again that we've discussed in these videos. What are their images and how does it relate to their melody writing? Taylor Swift is stylish, modern and warm, which we have said corresponds to the root note. The Weeknd is cold, mysterious and dark. His intervals are the four and five. Cold, mysterious intervals. And now, Ed Sheeran. What comes to mind when you think of him? Authentic, down to earth, charming, romantic, warm, nostalgic, funny, a real lad? which for some reason, no matter how I pronounce it, always sounds Russian. Well, which intervals fit this description? Warm, authentic, and down-to-earth make me think of the root note, and charming, romantic, and funny sound like the major third to me. And guess what? Those are Ed's favorite notes. Listen to this little compilation. How would you feel? Oh, no, no. They say she's in the class 18. Give a little time to me. We'll burn this out. We'll play hide and see. Now I see fire inside the mountain. I see fire. I'm out of touch. I'm out of love. I'll pick you up when you're getting down. Because we were just kids when we fell in love, not knowing what it so you can keep me inside the pocket of your ripped jeans I'm on my way, driving at 19 out of So honey now, take 
Pretty cool, huh? And by the way, if you're wondering, Ed is making use of the entire major scale, which as we discussed in the weekend episode is typical for white artists and singer-songwriters in particular because it sounds warmer and prettier than the pentatonic scale. What is the biggest enemy of authenticity in music? Being cheesy, being corny, being sappy. Well, one of the sappiest things you can do in songwriting is to double up a vocal with a third above or below the main vocal. I actually use this technique all the time, as do songwriters all around the world, and it does sound lovely, but it comes at a cost. It doesn't sound particularly honest, does it? So what does Ed Sheeran do? Listen to this. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. If this is to end in fire, then we should all burn together. When Ed wants to make an impact with the melody, he doubles it an octave above. While this doesn't add any new emotion to the melody, which in itself is already emotionally loaded because of his note choices, it helps the melody cut through and form the high point of the song. Now you may think, wait a minute, I've heard this before, haven't I? To which I'd say, yes you have, and thanks for pointing that out. You were probably thinking of this. My mama don't like you and she likes everyone. And I never like to admit that I was wrong. Unless you were still thinking about this, in which case I can't really blame you. So, you've heard this kind of backing vocals before from Justin Bieber. I'll let you in on a little secret. Justin doesn't write his own songs. And now guess who wrote Love Yourself? Right. This guy. If you're a performing artist, or if you write for performing artists, always make sure you understand the image first. If there is no image, there is no artist. There is only a singer. So sit down with your artists, talk to them about what they care about musically and privately. How do they come across? Do they look and behave in line with their sound? In other words, do they look the part or are they just trying to copy someone else and it just doesn't fit? I've had projects where we had to write over a dozen songs before we found the right tone. Now don't get paralyzed by this either. You still have plenty of creative freedom, but think about what kind of sound you're trying to accomplish and then focus on that. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please like, share and subscribe and let me know what your favorite Ed Sheeran song is in the comments, as well as which artist you'd like me to analyze next. This is Freedom of Finesse for Mystic Songwriting and thanks for watching.